What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to another reaction. Today, we got how to terraform Venus quickly. The fact that we have quickly in the title is going to be super interesting. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. This is uh, another space video. I love my fucking space. So, yeah, let's jump into this one, man. Leaving Earth to find new homes in space is an old dream of humanity and will sooner or later be necessary for our survival. Yep. The planet that gets the most attention is Mars, a small, toxic yep. and energy poor planet that just about seems good enough for a colony of depressed humans huddled in <laughs> underground cities. But what if we think bigger? What if we take Venus, one of the most hostile and deadly places in the solar system, and turn it into a colony? Not by building lofty cloud cities. Did you say, did, did, did you just say hostile, deadly? How are we going to terraform this then? But by creating a proper second Earth. It might be easier oh. than you think. Really? All right. Tell me how. Tell me how. Venus is by far the hottest planet in the solar system with a surface temperature of 460 degrees Celsius. Hot enough to melt lead. How would we do this that? This heat then? is due to the most extreme greenhouse effect in the solar system. CO2 is great at trapping heat, even a rise from 0.03% to 0.04% in Earth's atmosphere is heating up our planet right now. Venus's atmosphere is 97% CO2. Holy fuck. Also, Venus's atmosphere is 93 times denser than Earth's. Standing on Venus's surface would feel like taking a dive about 900 meters deep into the ocean. The pressure would kill you instantly. It's a truly horrible place, so why should we even bother? First and foremost, Venus is almost as big as Earth and has 90% of its surface gravity. How? I, how? Well, they're going to tell us in the video, but how the fuck would you terraform this? Like Surface gravity is a big problem when colonizing the solar system because it's very likely that long stays in low gravity places will have negative health effects. Venus's size means it could be the second largest habitat in the solar system. A new home for billions of humans and trillions of animals, with oceans, lush forests, and a beautiful blue sky. Pow. A properly terraformed Venus may be the most pleasant place to live outside of Earth. While we can't exactly terraform Venus today, a slightly more ambitious future version of us could take this project on. It will take a few generations to complete and be a huge challenge like building the Great Pyramids was for our ancestors. But then, it's not like humans have never started projects that took more than a lifetime to complete. Okay, let- Bro, you said quickly, man. You said quickly. I was sat here, expected we're gonna terraform this fucking planet in 20 years. That's quickly to me. You're talking about generations? I suppose in the sense of like life and like planets and you know, on the scale of, you know, the world itself on the scale of the universe yeah it's quickly right that is very quick a couple hundred years that is very very quick but for me mm, that's not quick man that's not quick <laughs> let's do it before anything else we need to cool venus down and remove the gas that makes up the yeah extremely it'll be heavy such atmosphere. a long process as mentioned there's a lot of it around 465 million billion tons how do we do that there are a few options we could create giant solar collectors powering a huge array of laser beams that heat up the atmosphere so much that it's blasted into space. Although we would need thousands of times the entire power generating capacity of humanity and it would still take thousands of years to remove the atmosphere. Wow. Another way is to sequester the atmosphere. By but like, the reason why Venus is so hot, right, is it only because of how much CO2 is on the planet? Or is it because of the position where it is to the sun? So, like, would you get rid of all the gas and all the stuff that you need to get rid of to actually cool down the planet? Then you've got the problem of how close Venus is to the sun, right? So, wait, I, I am correct in saying that, aren't I? Wait, no. Venus is be I Oh, my God. How do I not know this? Wait, what the fuck? What the fuck? Hold on. I, I have to Google this right now. Because I'm being so stupid. Hold on. You guys in chat are probably losing your minds. You guys are probably losing your minds. But it don't matter. It don't matter. Yeah, no, I am right. 
I, uh, yeah, I knew I was right. So it's closer to the fucking sun, right? But this is making out like it's further away. But it's just the CO2 is making a, it making the uh, planet hotter. So you, you'll have the problem of how close it is to the sun, right? How would we be able to solve that problem? Ending the CO2 in different compounds through chemical reactions. This video reactions. is making it like Venus we is further away than like Earth. We could mine calcium or magnesium on Mercury and shoot them at Venus via mass driver systems. Mercury's Electric way too rails hot. that make rockets unnecessary on smaller planets. The metals would combine to bind the CO2 into different carbonates basically forever. But the Bro, scale makes the whole that. thing impractical. I thought Venus was further away. We would need away. several hundred billion tons of material to sequester the CO2 this way. Seems like a waste of material and might take too long. An equally ridiculous idea that could actually work is to put Venus in the shade. Literally. By constructing a huge mirror to blot out the sun Holy to just freeze shit. the atmosphere. The mirror doesn't need to be complex or massive, just a very thin foil with a little structural support. Building such a large flat surface so close to the sun will turn it effectively into a solar sail and push it out of position. So instead yeah. of one giant circular object, our mirror will consist of many different pieces. Annular slats of angled mirrors can reflect sunlight from one set what of mirrors the to the next. Fuck? Mirrors would be angled, reflecting light from one to another until the light is redirected to the back, balancing the force on the front and holding them in position. What? After a few years of getting Bro, the infrastructure in place, things start slowly and then escalate. For the first few decades, the atmosphere slowly cools down but stays dense and deadly until after some 60 years it reaches the critical temperature of 31 degrees celsius suddenly the great flood begins on venus as co2 turns to liquid at this pressure and begins to rain down a constant global rainstorm of unbelievable proportions lasting 30 years the pressure and temperature suddenly begin to drop in unison for almost a century puddles turn into lakes and oceans the surface temperature is now what? minus 56 degrees Celsius, and the pressure has dropped to only seven times the pressure on Earth. Finally, at a really unpleasant minus 81 degrees Celsius, the CO2 oceans begin to freeze and the rain turns into snow. This leaves us with a frozen Venus covered in oceans as hard as rock and gigantic CO2 glaciers. What remains of the atmosphere is mostly nitrogen at about three times Earth's surface pressure. If you don't mind freezing and suffocating, you can now take a stroll over Venus's surface. But the frozen CO2 remains a- Wait, 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 one problem. One problem. Oxygen. Do, do, do we have any? Bit of a problem. At some point, we want to warm up the planet, but if we do, the CO2 ice will melt and fill up the atmosphere again. So we need some way to keep it from doing that. One is to simply cover it all with cheap plastic insulation and cover it up with ground-up Venus rock or water oceans. Although some planetary scientists will be very stressed out about us building a new planet containing a potential time bomb like that. A few unfortunately timed volcanoes could melt a lot of CO2 at once and ruin everything. Another obvious solution is to shoot it all out into space and collect it into a small moon for storage and future use. We can make this more efficient by using mass drivers instead of rockets, but moving all that mass will still be a pretty intense challenge that will take some time to solve. Whatever we end up doing with the atmosphere, to move forward we need water, which we could get from ice moons. Europa, a moon of Jupiter, has twice as much water as Earth's oceans. Now, catching a moon and transporting it through the solar system is not exactly easy. So instead, it might be easier to cut chunks of ice off Europa with an army of construction drones and shoot them at Venus using more of those mass drivers. Spa Bro, these guys like mass drivers, right? Have we even created anything like that? Or is this like just science fiction right now? Do you know what I mean? Like, you've got a fucking tube shooting things out at the right position, you know, into space. Like that sounds that sounds that sounds more complicated than what it actually seems. Like, like it seems very simple right now, but it's that's gonna be so complicated. These tethers could save us a lot of effort and energy here. We made a whole video explaining how they work, but in a nutshell, they are slings that can take a payload on both ends. 
On Europa, they do most of the work needed to catapult our ice to Venus. What the, the ice fuck? hits the Venus tethers, which gently drop it into the atmosphere, where it falls down as snow. In exchange, How? the Venus tethers get to catch CO2 ice shot up from below and accelerate it into orbit. We can remove excess nitrogen using this same method to further lower our atmospheric pressure. This is really cool, but how is this going to work? How is how is this going to work? How is this going to work? After a few how decades is it gonna work? or centuries, Venus would be covered by a nice, shallow, frozen ocean a few hundred meters deep. It would look extremely different from today. A few continents and countless islands have formed. This is beginning to look a bit like our planet. Now the last and most magnificent phase of terraforming begins, making the atmosphere breathable and adding life. Right, yeah. First, we need light, though, and we need to heat the planet up again. A Venus day is 2,802 hours long, more than 116 what Earth days. Fuck? So if we just remove our giant mirror, we would grill half of our planet. Even without the massive atmosphere, temperatures would reach unbearable levels. The simplest way to create a day-night cycle and let some energy in again is with another set of mirrors to illuminate our continents and melt our water oceans, which would let us completely control how much energy we get and where it goes. The atmosphere is now mostly made up of nitrogen and basically devoid of oxygen. So the first inhabitants will likely be trillions and trillions of cyanobacteria, which can get photosynthesizing and release oxygen. Wow. We know that they can quickly turn around the atmosphere of a planet because billions of years ago, they were probably responsible for turning the toxic atmosphere of our young Earth into an atmosphere with enough oxygen for more complex animal life. But not only that, cyanobacteria can fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and turn it into nutrients that can be used by living beings. This way, they will essentially fertilize our dead ocean water and prepare it for more complex organisms. On land, our colonists need to grind down some of the former Venusian surface to make soil for nitrogen-fixing plants to grow on. Eventually, billions of trees would spread, creating large forests covering massive parts of the continents. Venus would turn green. To speed things wow. up, CO2 would be strategically released to supply the plants and cyanobacteria. This is really fucking cool. Areas already covered with plants could get extra daylight from our orbital mirrors, so the plants would be active for most of each day. Bro, but listen, if you was on Venus, right, and this was the plan, your whole entire existence and life and planet is based on man-made mirrors letting light in, right? What if something goes wrong? What if one of these mirrors go wrong, right? What if some, you know, let's say a Venus terrorist wants to blow it out, you know what I mean? I don't know how that'd be. That that would be super hard. But you know, during this time, you never know, right? So, so something could go wrong with a mirror. Something could go wrong with something, and then you are fucked. You are royally fucked in any way. Like, if Venus drops in temperature or goes up in temperature, you're fucked. Maybe we won't have to do this with the same plants and animals we know today. As genetic engineering matures and our understanding of genetics and the machinery of life expands, we might just engineer life as we need it. All in all, it would take several thousand years to make the atmosphere breathable by humans. In the meantime, you could stroll around with nothing more than regular clothes and an oxygen mask. Settlers would enjoy a vast new planet filled with resources and bathed in sunlight. They might think of new ways to use the vast amounts of carbon dioxide ice and nitrogen orbiting in space above. Industrial processes, rocket fuel, or even boosting the terraforming of another planet like tiny Mars. Wow. Venus is fully terraformed. Animals roam through vast ecosystems. Cities are being constructed. So I'm guessing Venus is the best planet in our solar system to terraform them, right? Billions of settlers and their descendants make this world their home. They will see images of the past, how Venus was once the most hostile planet around, how it took hundreds of years to freeze hell and to ship in the oceans, and another few thousand years to make it possible to breathe freely. They will barely be able to believe it. Okay, wow. maybe it's not that easy to terraform Venus, <laughs> and a lot of things must go right for this future to become reality. But it is possible.
and with technology wow. that is within the reach of a motivated and slightly more advanced humanity that wants to venture into space. The only thing that's stopping it is our imagination. And that, at least, is a problem that's easy to overcome. Wow, that's actually crazy how, like... If you think about it, your imagination is the only thing stopping you from doing all kinds of things. All you need Very is a true. little nudge. And Very we might just true. have the right thing to get you started. Journal! We are big fans of... Like, really cool. Amazing video from these guys again. Yeah, that's super dope. And it's crazy the fact that, like, we can do something like that. Yeah, that's mad because you, you wouldn't think, like... We was always... Like, like, back in the day, you, you always be like, yo... Are we going to find a planet that's habitable like Earth? But no, we progress that much with our equipment and technology that we can just transform a planet into Earth. That's fucking mental, dude. But really good video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Make sure you guys do subscribe. We're getting super close to YouTube partner. So if you guys could drop a subscription to the channel, it'll really help out and it'll mean a lot. And if you guys got any videos you want me to react to, let them down in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.